This is a production of Cornell University. Okay, well, this is a Morphophallus titanum. This is the Titan Arum or the corpse flower. Um, it gets the name Titan Arum from Sir Attenborough on BBC special because he thought it was inappropriate to talk about a Morphophallus in front of family and children. So he dubbed it the Titan Arum. What you're looking at is the largest unbranched inflorescence uh, in the botanical world. And by inflorescence, we mean a stem that bears uh, more than one flower. So uh, this is actually uh, a, a structure that's called the spathe in the spadix. Uh, this is the spathe, which is a highly modified leaf that wraps around the spadix, uh, which will eventually, eventually be revealed when this is ready to be pollinated. Um, the spadix is a central stem that bears uh, numerous little flowers. And in this particular case, the flowers that are going to produce seeds are at the bottom, and the flowers that produce pollen are up towards the top. So when this flower is ready to be pollinated, this spathe will unfurl, looking like a dress of a ballerina, except upside down. On the inside, it'll be brilliantly red to maroon uh, to mimic the appearance of rotting flesh, because in addition to producing that appearance of rotting flesh, it also releases a very foul smell that attracts flies, and also many believe carrion-eating beetles. So that red inner surface of the spathe is supposed to mimic uh, a carcass of some kind of animal, and the fragrance is supposed to mimic rotting flesh to attract flies and carrion beetles. Uh, to my nose, this particular species, the, the fragrance, if we want to dignify it with that word, smells like rotting uh, fish. Uh, a related plant, the kojak, a Morphophallus kojak, uh, which is figured over there, is reported to smell like rotting mouse or rat. So each of the species actually has its own fragrance, and there's two, at least, that are very pleasant in their fragrance. One smells like uh, chopped carrot, and the other smells a little bit like banana, but we, we are in front of the corpse flower. So that's the reproductive aspect of the plant. What is hidden is the underground working part from year to year, and that's the corm. So this is what the underground part of the plant looks like. Uh, technically, this is called a corm, which is a highly modified stem. Uh, the inflorescence, the collection of flowers with the spathe and spadix, emerges from the center of the corm, and in fact, if you look in here, there's a very good indication that this corm may be ready to produce its own flower. So after the flower, flowers open up and are pollinated and produce seed, uh, the entire inflorescence withers uh, and uh, breaks apart after the fruits and seeds are dispersed. And this corm will send up the vegetative parts of the plant, the plants that are photosynthetic. Uh, these are uh, one or more leaves. So these are, these are the babies of Wee Stinky that we collected uh, two to three years ago. And thanks to the wonderful staff here, uh, uh, like Paul Cooper, who have kept these plants happy and growing well, uh, we now have additional specimens. And this is what a leaf of the Titan Arum will look like. This is uh, not a stem. It's the base of a single leaf. Uh, that is then divided into three. And they're extremely decorative and extremely beautiful plants, I think. And then what will happen is eventually these leaves will exhaust themselves, they'll become dormant, and the corm will rest for a while, for uh, an unprescribed uh, number of months, uh, and then the cycle will be repeated over and over again, with some luck.
I think it's, it's uh, you know, people like Paul Cooper who have done such a brilliant job keeping these plants happy that the same specimen is actually flowering in less than three years. It's very unusual to have a corm uh, produce an inflorescence over such a short time. Usually there's a resting period of maybe five, six, and in some cases as much as 11 years. So after pollination, uh, the spathe, that outer skirt, uh, modified leaf will wither and the pollen producing flowers which are up towards the top will also wither but then what will happen is the individual uh, uh, flowers, the female plants, uh, each of them will develop an individual fruit and each of these now is the fruit of a single flower. Uh, the bright red is believed to attract birds like hornbills which uh, are common uh, in Indonesia, Sumatra, and the birds will, uh, it's believed, uh, disperse these seeds. They'll eat the outer fleshy part of the, of the fruit, and the inner part of the fruit is like a nut, and inside that nut is the actual seed, and that passes through the birds, and that's the way these plants get uh, dispersed uh, in their native environment. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.